Howdy, howdy, my fellow gamers, and welcome back to another episode of Storytime with Freak as we continue through Neil Tolls the Shusterman. Neil Tolls the Shusterman. Yeah, I said that. Uh, Neil Shusterman's the toll. Wow, I am tired. Um, recovering from a cold, so I'm probably not going to do a super long episode this time, guys, and I do apologize for that. We will continue with the uh, longer episodes later, but right now, kind of all I want to do is curl up in bed with my Switch. So, without further ado... <clears throat> I am pleased to announce that the Vault of Relics and Futures has been retrieved intact from the Endura wreckage. The Founders' robes are undamaged and shall shortly begin a touring exhibition under the auspices of the Interregional inter Museum of the Scythedom. The Scythe Diamonds are all accounted for and have been divided evenly between all regions. Scythedoms that did not have a representative present at the salvage site may claim their portion of the diamonds by contacting the Amazonian Scythedom. I understand some regions have taken the position that their landmass or the size of the respective population should entitle them to a larger portion of the diamonds. However, we in Amazonia stand by the decision to divide the gems equally. We do not wish to involve ourselves in any controversy and consider the matter closed. While I am personally leaving the state, there are numerous ships from various regions still working salvaging the wreckage. I wish all those engaged in the solemn but necessary venture the best of luck. May the deep reward you with the treasures and treasured memories of those that we have lost. Respectfully, Honorable Scythe Sidney Pasuelo of Amazonia. August 2nd, Year of the Cobra. We switched from Year of the Raptor to Year of the Cobra. Co Chapter 9, Collateral Consequences. Whatever it was her health nanites were supposed to be doing, they weren't doing it, because Citra felt awful. It wasn't pain so much as an abiding unwellness. Her joints felt like they hadn't been flexed in forever. She was nauseated, but lacked the strength to even retch. The room she woke in was familiar. Not as a specific place, but she knew the type of room it was. There was an artificial peacefulness about it, fresh-cut flowers, ambient music, diffused light that seemed to have no identifiable source. This was a recovery room and a revival center. You're awake, said a nurse who entered the room just a few moments after Citra had regained consciousness. Don't try to speak yet. Give it another hour. The nurse moved around the room, checking on things that didn't need checking. She seemed anxious. Why? wondered Citra. Would a revival nurse be anxious? Citra closed her eyes and tries to puzzle out the situation. If she was in a revival center, it meant she had gone deadish, yet she couldn't dredge up the circumstance of her death. Panic rose as she tried to dig for the memory. Whatever had caused her latest demise was hiding behind a door that her mind wasn't ready to open. All right, then. She chose to leave it alone for now and concentrate on what she did know. Her name. She was Citra Terranova. No. Wait, that wasn't entirely right. She was someone else, too. Yes. Yes, she was Scythe Anastasia. She had been with Scythe Kiri, hadn't she? Somewhere far from home. Endura! That's where they had been. What a beautiful city. Had something happened to them on Endura? Again, that sense of foreboding welled up inside of her. She took a deep breath and another to calm herself. Right now, it was enough to know that the memories were there, ready for her when she was just a little stronger. And she was sure, now that she was awake, that Scythe Kiri would soon be by her side to help her get back into the swing of things. Rowan, on the other hand, remembered everything the moment he awoke. He had been in Citra's embrace, the two of them cloaked in the robes of the founding sites Promethea, Prometheus and Cleopatra as Endura sank beneath the Atlantic. But those robes did not stay on for long. Being with Citra, truly being with her, had felt like the culminating moment of Rowan's life, and for a time, all too brief, it was as if none of the rest mattered. Then their world was rocked in a very different way. The sinking city hit something on the way down. Although he and Citra were protected in a vault that was magnetically suspended within another vault, it didn't block out the sounds of rending steel as Endura broke apart. Everything lurched violently and the vault took a sharp tilt. The mannequins holding the Founders' robes tumbled, falling towards Citra and Rowan as if the Founders themselves were launching an attack on their union. Then came the diamonds, thousands of them, flying from the niches in their wall, pelting Rowan and Citra like hail. Through it all, they held each other, whispering words of comfort. Shh, it's alright. Everything's gonna be fine. Of course, none of that was true, and both of them knew it. They were just going to die, if not in this instant, then soon enough. It was just a matter of time. Their only comfort was in each other, and in the knowledge that death need not be permanent. Then the power went out. Everything went dark. The magnetic field failed, and the inner vault plunged. They were in a free fall, but only for an instant. Then the debris around them leaped up, then came down on them as the inner vault slammed down against the wall of the outer vault. But luckily, the founder's robes suffered buffered them from the worst of it, as if the Founders had now chosen to protect them, rather than attack. Is it over? Citra had asked. I don't think so, Rowan said, because there was still a sensation of movement and a vibration that was getting stronger. They were lying on the V-shaped wedge made by the tilted floor in the wall. We're on a slope, I think, slipping deeper. Half a minute later, one more violent lurch tore the two of them apart. Rowan was struck in the head by something heavy, hard enough to daze him. Citra found him in the darkness before he could pull himself free to seek her out. Are you okay? I think so. 
Now nothing moved. The only sounds were the distant creaks of straining metal and the mournful woodwind modes of escaping air. But no air escaped the vault of relics and futures, and no water got in. That's what Scythe Kiri had been counting on when she sealed them in there. And although Endura was in a subtropical zone and the temperature of the ocean floor was the same everywhere, barely a degree above freezing. Once the vault succumbed to the chill, their bodies would be very well preserved, and only moments after hitting the bottom, Rowan could feel the cold air around them already getting cold. They had died here at the bottom of the sea, but now they had been revived. But where was Citra? He couldn't tell. He could tell he wasn't in a revival center. The walls were concrete. The bed beneath him wasn't a bed at all, but a slab. He was in an ill-fitting gray institutional clothing drenched from his own sweat because it was uncomfortably warm and humid. One side of the room was a minimalistic commode, and on the other side, a door on the kind that can only be opened from the outside. He had no idea where he was or even when he was, for there's no way to mark the passing of time when you're dead. But he did know that he was in a cell, and whatever his captors had in store for him was not going to be pleasant. After all... He was Scythe Lucifer, which meant a single death was not good enough. He would have to die countless times to calm the fury of his captors, whoever they were. Well, the joke was on them. They didn't know that Rowan had died over a dozen times at the hand of Scythe Goddard already, only to be revived time and time again, and killed time and time again. Dying was easy. A paper cut? That would be annoying. Scythe Kiri didn't come for Citra, and the various nurses attending to Citra all carried the same sense of anxiety, offering nothing but diffused light and professional pleasantries to illuminate her situation. Her first visitor was a surprise. It was Scythe Pasuelo of Amazonia. She had only met him once on a train from Buenos Aires. He had helped her elude the Scythes who were pursuing her. Citra considered him a friend, but not so close a friend that he would come to her revival. I'm glad you're finally awake, Scythe Anastasia. He sat beside her, and she just noticed his greeting wasn't exactly warm. He wasn't unfriendly, just reserved. Guarded. He hadn't smiled, and although he met her eye, it was as if he was seeking something in her. Something he had yet to find. Good morning, Scythe Pasuelo, she said, mastering her best Scythe Anastasia voice. Afternoon, actually, he said. Time flows in odd little edities when you're in revival. He was silent for a long moment. Citra Terra Nova might have found awkward, but Scythe Anastasia found merely tiresome. I'm guessing you're not just here for a soul soul visit, Scythe Pasuelo. Well, I am pleased to see you, he said, but my reason for being here has to do with your reason for being here. I don't follow. He gave her that searching look again, then finally asked, What do you remember? The panic rose again as she considered the question, but she did her best to hide it. In fact, some of it had come back to her since she'd regained consciousness, but not all. I went to Endura with Marie, Scythe Kiri, that is, for an inquest with the Grand Slayers, although I'm hazy as to why. The inquest had to do with who would succeed Zanakates as High Blade of Mid-America, Pasuelo explained. The door opened a little wider. Yes, yes, I remember now. The dread inside her grew. We faced the council, made our arguments, and the council agreed that Goddard was not eligible and that Scythe Kiri should be high blade. Pasuelo leaned away, slightly taken aback. That, that is eye-opening. There were more memories now looming like storm clouds on her mental horizon. I'm still having trouble remembering what came next. Perhaps I can help you, said Pasuelo, no longer mincing the words. You were found sealed inside the vault of relics and futures in the arms of the young man who murdered the Grand Slayers and thousands of others, the monster who sank in Dura. Food and water came twice a day for Rowan, sliding through a small slit in the door, but whoever was doing the sliding didn't speak at all. Can you talk, he called out when the next meal arrived, or are you like the tonists who cut their tongues out? You aren't worth much for the waste of words, his captor responded, though his accent had an, though his voice had an accent. franco ibiarian maybe? Or sh He didn't know what continent he was on, much less which reason. Where? Or perhaps he was misreading the situation. Perhaps this wasn't life at all. Maybe he was dead for good, and considering the sweltering nature of the cell, this was the mortal age idea of hell. Fire and brimstone, and the actual Lucifer, horns and all, ready to punish Rowan for stealing his name. In his current light-headed state, it seemed possible. If so, he hoped Citra was in that other place with pearly gates and cottony clouds where everyone had wings and a harp. Ha! Citra playing a harp. She would hate that. Well, all musings aside, if this was indeed the living world when Citra was here too, regardless of his current situation, it was a comfort to know that Scythe Kiri's ploy to save them had worked. Not that the Grand Dame of Death had any desire to save Rowan, his alphasian was just a collateral consequence, but that was fine. He could live with that, as long as Citra had lived as well. The Vault! How could Citra forget the Vault? All it took was Scythe Pasuelo's mention of it to bring back the memory. Citra closed her eyes and kept them closed for a long time as her mind flooded just as inescapably as the streets of the doomed city had. And once the memories came, they didn't stop coming. One revelation after another, each one worse than the last. The bridge to the council chambers collapsing. The frenzied mob at the marina as the city began to sink. The mad scramble with Marie to higher ground. And Rowan. Anastasia, are you alright? Pasuelo asked. Give me some time, she told him. She remembered Marie tricking her and Rowan into the vault and sealing it. And she remembered everything that came after, down to their last moments there in the dark. 
After Endura fractured and hit bottom, Citra and Rowan had pulled all the Founder's robes over themselves as the vault grew colder and colder. It was Citra who suggested that they cast the robes off and allow their bodies to succumb to the cold, rather than wait until the chamber ran out of oxygen. As a scythe, she knew all about the many ways to die. Hypothermia was much easier than oxygen deprivation. Encroaching numbness, rather than a desperately gasping for air. She and Rowan held each other, relying on nothing but body heat, until that began to fade. Then they shivered in each other's arms until they t were too cold to shiver anymore, and they slipped away. Anastasia finally opened her eyes and looked at Pasuela. Please tell me that Scythe Kiri made it to safety. He took a long, slow breath, and she knew even before he spoke. She did not, Pasuela told her. I'm sorry. She perished with all the others. This might have been common knowledge to the world by now, but it was fresh and painful to Anastasia. She resolved not to give way to tears, at least not now. You still haven't answered my question, Pasuela said. Why were you with the man who killed the Grand Slayers? Rowan wasn't the one who killed them, and he did not sink in Dura. There were witnesses among the survivors. And what did they witness? The only thing they can say is that he was there. And he wasn't there by choice. Pasuela shook his head. I'm sorry, Anastasia, but you're not seeing this clearly. You've been duped by a very charismatic and self-serving monster. The North American Scythedom has further evidence to prove what he did. Which North American Scythedom? Pasuela hesitated and chose his words carefully. A lot has changed while you were at the bottom of the sea. Which North American Scythedom? Anastasia demanded again. Pasuela sighed. There's only one now. With the exception of the Thunderhead's Charger region, all of North America is under God's, Goddard's leadership. She didn't even know how to begin processing that, so she decided not to. She'd save it for when she was stronger, more centered in the here and now, whatever and whenever the here and now turned out to be. Well, she said with as much nonchalance as she could muster, with all due respect, it sounds like the world has been duped by a very charismatic and self-serving monster. Pasuela sighed again. This is sadly true. I can tell you that neither I nor anyone in the Amazonian Scythem have much love for Overblade Goddard. Overblade? Overblade of North America. He claimed the position at the beginning of this year. Pasuela scowled at the thought. As if the man wasn't vainglorious enough, he had to invent an even more pompous title for himself. Anastasia closed her eyes. They burned. Her whole body did. The news made her flesh want to reject the life that had been returned to it and go back to being blissfully dead. And finally, she asked the question she'd have been avoiding since she awoke. How long? she asked. How long were we down there? Pasuela clearly did not want to answer, but it was not something he could keep from her. So he clasped her hand and said, You've been dead for more than three years. And that is the end of that chapter, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out for this short episode of story time. Um, to make up for the fact that I didn't do multiple chapters in this one, I will do my best to get like another chapter out to you guys tomorrow. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get back to the consistent multi-chapter episodes. Like I said, I'm just not feeling too hot, so I'm going to go lay down. But I appreciate you guys all watching. And uh, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share the channel. Um, we're going to read a lot more books. So I know a lot of you are just here for uh, Neil Shusterman and the Scythe books. But we're, like I said, we're going to do some video game books. Gears of War, Assassin's Creed, Witcher. I want to read you guys my favorite book series ever, Aragon and the Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. I'd love to read you the Night Angel Trilogy, the Lord of the Rings books, Ready Player One. I've got a lot planned for what I want to do for the channel, along with the gaming content. We actually just recorded our first ever podcast last night. We are going to launch it once we hit 500 subscribers. So if you haven't already, hit that button up top. Click the bell to get notified when we do upload. And... Uh, have a great evening and stay freaky.